Here is a journey on the road. Sorry to complete specify it and simple component. So the drawing are linked together by a master drawing or assembly drawing, which gives the drawing numbers of the uh, subsequent detailed components. So quantities required, what construction materials and possibly 3D images that can be used to locate individual items, although mostly consisting of uh, pictography representations, abbreviations, and symbols are used for a uh, uh, brevity, and, brevity and additional textual explanations may also be provided to convey the necessary information. So each project have class of discipline, we call it discipline in engineering, so mechanical, structural, architectural, electrical, even electronics, uh, what else? Plumbing, what else? Like, there's lots of, there's also a, like, we call it a special drawings, like shop drawings, uh, asbel drawings, what else? So there's lots of discipline inside the project, even if it's, uh, it's just a small project, but it covers a lot. So it's a, it's a very wide uh, industry. So I will show you. So for more information, I will show you one. So it can explain us what's about what about engineering drawing. Different parts of a system fit together. Ultimately, they're tools that engineers use to communicate. So being able to understand them is an important skill but it can sometimes feel like they're quite difficult to decipher. In this video, we'll cover everything you need to know to make sense of them. So let's get started. Engineering drawings come in all shapes and sizes. Assembly drawings show how all of the different components of an assembly fit together and the functional relationship between them. Detailed drawings, on the other hand, fully define the geometry of a single component. Although they don't normally define the manufacturing methods that should be used, they provide all the information needed to fabricate and inspect a specific part. Other types of drawings include layout drawings that are used to illustrate a design approach and so don't include much detail, and interface control drawings 
that identify any interfaces with other components. Drawings often follow conventions that are defined in technical standards, with the most common being ASME Y14 and the various ISO standards. Standards go into a lot of detail, and companies usually have their own requirements anyway. So in this video, we'll just cover the fundamentals and some best practices without focusing on any one particular standard. Regardless of the standard being used, drawings all have the same general structure. The title block is usually located in the bottom right corner. It contains important information like the company logo, drawing title, drawing number, the scale of the drawing, and information about the author, checker, and approver. <coughs> On detailed drawings, the title block might also include information about the part material, finish, and surface roughness. Next, there's the revision history table, usually in the top right corner, that lists changes to the drawing. And finally, there's the drawing space, which is where views of the component or assembly are shown. If there are a lot of different views on the same page, it can be confusing, but there's always an underlying structure to how they're laid out. Let's start by looking at primary views, which are the front, side, and top and bottom views that are a key part of any detailed drawing. We'll illustrate how they're drawn using this bracket. A primary view is created by projecting the visible edges of the part onto an imaginary plane that's located between the part and the observer and is aligned with the face of the object. This is called an orthographic projected view. The orthographic part means that the projection lines are at right angles to the plane. One view is chosen to be the front view. This is usually the view that provides the most information about the object. Additional projected views showing its other sides are then needed to fully define the object in three dimensions. This is the view of the left side of the object. This is the rear view. And we can generate the top, bottom, and right views in the same way. The projection planes are then unfolded, and this is how the views are placed on a drawing. Because the projection plane was between the camera and the object, the left view ends up being placed to the left of the front view, the top view is placed above it, and so on. Only enough views need to be used to ensure that the part is fully defined. Here, the right, bottom, and rear views aren't needed and can be removed. This way of arranging the views, based on the projection plane being placed between the camera and the object, is called third angle projection. But there's another common method, called first angle projection, where the projection plane is located behind the object, instead of in front of it. When this method is used, the left view is placed to the right of the front view, and the top view is placed below it. First angle projection is more commonly used in Europe, and third angle projection is more common in North America. To understand why these methods are called first and third angle projections, consider two perpendicular planes that create four quadrants. If an object is located in quadrant one and is being viewed either from above or from the right, the views are projected onto planes that are behind the object, which is first angle projection. But in the third quadrant, the views are projected onto planes that are in front of the object, which is third angle projection. A symbol showing a tapered cone is used to indicate which projection method has been used on the drawing. Is Heather Fresh one of the pros? Um, Absolutely. So that's uh, more advanced now. In the beginning, I was doubtful too. 
No, it's just stick, uh, stick or stick on to the drawing. So we'll continue this one here. So first, uh, what is to the drawing? So maybe some of you doesn't have any experience or doesn't have work experience in uh, engineering drawing. So I will explain to you what is to the drawing. So create technical drawings with an array of uh, pictures including adjustable lines, styles, flows, shapes, and cross-hatching. So you can, as you can see in the, in the video uh, earlier that there are some, some shapes, uh, different kind of shapes. So 2D CAD offers the uh, ability to save uh, settings, annotate drawings, and easily replicate fonts, styles, and color palettes. It's uh, collaborative in interface increases efficiency with multiple component projects such as product design or, or illustration. So because we are in the engineering industry, so these are all uh, applicable. So um, so the meaning of the CAD is uh, computer-aided computer -aided, um, drawing. So uh, we will just stick on the 2D drawings. So, I'll show you one example of two drawing. So you can see earlier about the quadrant. So there's a four quadrant, the first, second, third, and fourth. So uh, he show us the, in the first quadrant, there's a elevation, floor plan, which is the top view. Then also in the engineering drawings, we call it section. If you, for example, this one here, this model, if you cut this one into half, so you can see the internal part of this um, model. So that's our section. And then this is our front view. This is our floor plan, which is where looking at the top of the drawing. This is our top view, uh, the bottom view. And then the other side is the side view. So there's a uh, like quadrants on the views, we call it uh, viewports. So that's uh, one example of our 2D drawing. So it shows their dimensions. What else? Fonts. And then, for example, this one here, they shaded this one because they cut it. So this one is the, this is not cut. So this one, the shaded area is cut. <coughs> Yeah, it's symmetrical. This is the middle line. It's all symmetrical. Yep, all the dimension is there. So that's one of the example, simple example of the fluid drawing. So this is this is a hand drawn, uh, not a computer. Can I this is a hand drawn because I have drawn like these drawings when I started my engineering. I used to draw this. And then this is more complex. This, this is a drawing of a house. Like maybe some of you uh, already uh, saw this one, this kind of drawing. So again, we have the quadrant, the four quadrant, which is in the first one is the elevation. Second one, the ground floor. Third <coughs> one, that was the uh, new for how? Oh, yeah, first floor and then we have the cross section. So there's two, two kinds of section, which is cross section and the longitudinal section, which is the more long. For example, if you turn this house into lo like a length, lengthwise, so it's more long, that's why it's a longitudinal section. So you can see all the details, like specification, and then dimensions, we have our ground here, ground line, this one here, ground line, eaves level. So all those stuff, you can see all those stuff on the on the 2D drawing. So we can use this one to get a permit or council approval for our projects. So this is um, like a, this is very common in architectural drawings, but we will, on mechanical drawing. So the next one, what is 2D CAD software? 
because we're using uh, softwares in uh, doing our our drawing. So CodyCAD software offers increased design productivity and can lead to fast, faster project approval. So it means that we are not in a generation of pyramid or uh, ancient times. And that's why it's more faster while we, we're uh, producing our drawing. So giving various themes, real time, <coughs> access to the most current versions of the design. So I remember 2001, we're still using the CAD LT. So it's more uh, um, older version of the CAD. So there's some like features that are not the same in this generation. So giving various themes real time access to the most current version of the design in any adjustments from technical drawings to landscaping layouts, replicate designs easily, modifying them quickly and share them instantly with colleagues anywhere in the world. So this is very useful for, for example, teamwork, like in a team, like a big projects or big, uh, uh, big companies that we are uh, collaborating, for example, mechanical, they will easily change something. For example, if you change something on the structural, it's very easy to change the some of the discipline like electrical, um, mechanical, or all those uh, disciplines in the in the construction. <coughs> so I will show you some example of maybe in the future because you're become a, you're becoming a future engineers in Australia. So maybe you can um, you can experience some of these softwares that are very common. <coughs> AutoCAD is very common. What else? Archicad, very common. MicroStation. What else? OilDraw, very common. Yeah, there's lots of um, there's lots of um, softwares. It's um, it's depend to the it's depend to the demand or it's depend to the use of the company. Like for example, if your company is more on architectural. Most of architectural use AutoCAD. Mm -hmm. Then, if your if your um, company is more on, I think details, ArchiCAD is good for details, detail, detailing. Yes, for example, your company is more on graphics, you can use Photoshop. So it's different kinds of uh, features and use. So yeah, there's lots of uh, software in the market right now. Then 2D drafting, 2, 2D CAD softwares makes it easier to seamlessly take concepts from the drawing design phase to the drafting phase that fleshes out uh, precise dimensions and scale. So yeah, I show you about dimension and scale. So architects, engineers, and construction professionals will appreciate the built-in efficiency and AutoCAD offering features. So, that's one example because AutoCAD is very common. That's the most common uh, software for TV. Offering features that streamline the drawing process alongside integrated workflows. Develop landscaping layouts, uh, floor plans, and more. So view and collaborate <coughs> with plans according to a multitude of devices, including desktop, web, and mobile. Even even in the cell phone right now, you can draw your house in the cell phones. There's um, like an app application in the cell phone that you you just stretch, you just make lines like, like that. So you, we have like uh, how do you call that one? Stabilo, Stabilos. Yes, yeah, the pen for the for the how do you call that one? Uh, pen for the phone. So now uh, for now I will just use. Um, So we will just use the uh, Autodesk Inventor. So I will just make this one a bit. So, so far, do you have any question? Question, clarification?
So yeah, uh, inventor is also very common, especially in mechanical engineers, in mechanical engineering company. In inventor is very uh, useful because I from 2D they can uh, they can convert the drawing, the whole drawings to 3D, and then you can go to simulation. So some um, so I already give you all the softwares and resources that you can use to. Uh, uh, create drawings for our um, project. So I will just explain to you how, what is the functions of uh, inventor. So in this area, we call it in the ribbon. Also this one here, we have some commands here. Each of the, each of the uh, icons here has functions. So if we go to start, then it will show you this blank page here. There's, there's nothing yet. Uh, there's nothing here yet. So we go to new. It will start a project. So part, assembly, drawing, and the presentation, which will give us some uh, simulation later on. But for now, we will just uh, go and discuss about 3D drawing. So for a start, we go to part. But before that, we need to set up our our drawing. We need to go to new. So it gives you this one, create new file. Then we have here, it should be metric because uh, Australia <coughs> use metric. So millimeter here, so it means IPP is parts. Parts create, uh, create PD, then assembly, then this one is the drawing, which is with PWD, then the presentation. But for now, for our start, we go to the standard, which is the NM IPP, then create. So just follow what I'm doing. So, all right. So for our start, um, the inventor will give you a blank page here, there's nothing here. And then uh, again, as what I said, we have commands here in the ribbon area. So for our start, we will do the 3D sketch. Then go to 3D sketch. Then as what we watched earlier in the YouTube, that we have quadrants. So we have first quadrant, second, third, fourth. So this is a sketch uh, plane that we can start our drawing. Like for example, this one is the uh, YZ uh, plane, is our front view. XY plane is our side view. And then the XZ plane is our top view. The top view. So I will choose XY, uh, XZ, yeah. So if you click that one, just once, it gives you the blank page here that's showing us the axis, the two axis which is the Y axis and the X axis. So first I will show you all the functions of these uh, uh, icons here. For example, we have the circle. You click that one, you can create a circle. Then we have, we can put our, for example, the diameter of our circle is 10 millimeter. Oops, sorry. 10 millimeter. So we use M mm or millimeter. Right? So I will delete this one. So if you go to line, the sketch will give you a line. So you can see the dimension. If you want to see the dimension of our line, you just click the dimension. Then if you want to change that one to <coughs> 10, then enter. So we have 10 mil line here. For example, I want to create arc. Okay. Then if you want to create 
rectangle, just click the rectangle, or we have some option, just click the arrow down, how you can create your rectangle, for example, the two point, <coughs> click here, then click here, so we have rectangle. And then, for example, <coughs> we have three point here, click here, click, then click here. Different method how you can create rectangle, and then we have two point here. This is more most common one because it will give you two dimension like that. So you can see the dimension on the x uh, y axis and then the x axis. So it's very common. So if you type ten by ten, then click the path. part also uh, designed just for safety purposes or maybe aesthetics. I think most uh, most um, product are they give us uh, some fillet just for safety purposes. What else? Yeah, look at this fillet. Yeah, most of the products have fillet. Even pen, <coughs> even pen have fillet more safe and yeah looks good yeah it looks good yeah smooth this one fillet yeah most of the products are fillet what else text you can put text point you can put point um yeah we can move like for example or just I mean, if you want to undo you just click the uh, control and z your shape work is very easy so for example I have a um, line I'll put line somewhere here so for example I have a line here then I want to move that one to somewhere here just click the move click this one Your line, but if you want to have like you want to uh, move the dimension, I know move this line from the middle. For example, you want to put by uh, five meters, so you just type, you just click the dimension, click the line, click this line here in the middle. Then I want five meters. 5,000 mil, so that's 5,000 mil. So you see this line, or you can do it like three, three meters. Yeah, so that's three meters from the middle. Good. All right. So most most of the time, especially in like um, 
the mechanical drawing, there is some like guys, like for example, this one here. So uh, for now, I will just make, I will show you what, um, I have some video here that you can, you can reflect our drawings in a reality world, like, This is not just a drawing, this, this, is, this has a purpose, especially in our engineering industry. So you can see what's the purpose of our drawing. <laughs> to work on the Appomattox. It's taken nearly 40 years of design to get to this point, involving hundreds of engineers who faced a monumental challenge to create a state-of-the-art, greener, longer-lasting oil platform that's bigger than any other shell has ever built. There's been a lot of design challenges, there's been a lot of installation challenges. We had so many challenges that we had never even thought about before. Over the past two years, large modules were constructed on the quayside, then lifted by gigantic cranes and stacked on top of each other with inch-perfect precision. It's a bit like making a giant 3D puzzle. The platform's designers also had their own puzzle to solve. How to make Appomattox last for 40 years? You see, you always... After the after the, the construction of the the we call it the platform, you always check the drawing. It's not just like in one go, but always go come back to the drawing, come back to the drawing, check, then reflect in the in the uh, construction just to make sure that everything is on the right path. That's double the lifespan of most other platforms. Over the course of that time, it's going to see some of the worst weather conditions on the planet. So we have to build it with the utmost quality because there's a lot of lives who will be on there seven days a week, 24 hours a day, that depend on it. The oil platform will be located 80 miles from the Louisiana coast in water a mile and a half deep. 7,000 foot of water, that's, that's what you are on very amazing. It just, it just floats on water. You think about it, it's pretty amazing that something that big actually floats, but it does. The oil reservoir is another 14,000 feet. So this is one of the example of the geotechnical drawing. So you can see the contours, elevation, then some de distances, some uh, specification of each areas. So where you can locate your location, um, like for example, the location of the, of the project. So you can see some uh, numbers there, 25,500. So those are the elevations and uh, physical description of the area. Hello, the see that. When Appomattox is up and running, crude oil from subsea wells will be processed, cleaned, and separated into oil and different gases. It's a process that requires a lot of energy. The power plant on Appomattox is 150 megawatts, and that's five times larger than our next largest facility, and is enough to power about 100,000 homes. Most oil platforms are powered by diesel generators. But in a drive to be more environmentally friendly, Appomattox is fully electric, reducing emissions by 25%. To achieve this, they took a leaf out of the book of the electric car manufacturer, Tesla. Electrifying the car allows you to completely optimize that car around the electrification. And that is basically what we've done with Appomattox. We've made it your Tesla car with one centralized um, electricity system as uh, low in terms of emission impact on the environment as possible. 
The team designed an ultra-efficient method of generating electricity. The team designed an... The so you can see here some drawings, CG drawings, where they can, they can um, make us a reference for their design, like Tesla and electric power car. So, yes, yeah, very important from, imagine from 2D drawings, then travel to the reality. Yes, yeah, very, yes, yeah, very useful. Team designed an ultra efficient method of generating electricity using natural gas and steam turbines. But it's a process that generates a lot of heat that would require a huge amount of water for cooling. We realized that we needed 2.5 million barrels of seawater a day. That's about the amount of water you would need for Houston's potable water supply every day. We started to question, well, what is the environmental impact of that type of consumption? The wells. The team faced a double challenge to use less water and ensure marine life is unaffected. Specialist marine researchers were drafted in to help. They discovered that at a depth of 2,000 feet, the water in this part of the Gulf of Mexico was so much colder they could cut their consumption in half. And so we made a project decision to source water from 2,000 feet deep. The sea life they found at this depth was mostly very small fish and crustaceans, including one called Formima. It's believed to be the inspiration for the 1986 movie, Aliens. It was a creature that lived inside of another creature for protection. He's got a little mouth that comes and sticks out, and he's just a terrifying little creature. Researchers discovered that Formima swims at a half foot per second which gave them an idea. To use multiple water intake pipes, pulling water from 2,000 feet slowly enough to allow Fromima and friends to stay out of harm's way. So if you see how, how clever they are, like they use that concept, uh, that, that um, how you call it one? That orga uh, organism to, to come up with an idea that they Based on their, how they build the. Uh, you had asked us early on, we would never have told you that a critical factor in the design would have been the speed of which small fish swim. But with one challenge resolved, another one was looming. Engineers needed a pipe insulation that could last four decades and withstand big temperature fluctuations 7,000 feet under the sea. The insulation system probably the closest to the biggest challenge. We really didn't have a solution when we started. For help, the team turned to a group of Caltech scientists testing a chemical catalyst used in a very different field. It's the kind of solution only chemists could come up with. So they have a catalyst that they use for hepatitis vaccines, and they mix that with a chemical that we use to make synthetic oil. That turns into insulation that we can put on a pipe and then put the 7,000 feet water. Catalyst created insulation that was long-lasting, extremely strong, and pliable. Qualities that have made it a contender for a completely different application. Bulletproof vests. And it wasn't just the pipe insulation that had to last for 40 years. Another major challenge was the limited lifespan of tanks needed to store corrosive chemicals. Oh, yep, so you can see there floor plan of that platform is a bit symmetrical, maybe some changes on the inside, then some specification here, then some detail, maybe um, like the dimensions, and then some grid lines, you can see some grid lines, like for example, we'll just assume maybe Column A1, like this one here, column A2, somewhere like that. So it's very important the 2D drawings for, um, imagine this is a very huge project, but you know, how you can interpret the drawing, the engineering drawing, the 2D drawing to a project. That's very useful. So, so we'll proceed to the 3D. So that's the 
that's the end of our movie. So I will show you. I can go back to that uh, video later on. So this is the this is the uh, finished product of our 3D drawing. I'll just open it. So if you observe there in the platform, the oil rig platform, uh, it's more of steel framing. So that's why I came up with this framing. So this one here. So I I showed you earlier. So if I hide this one. So this is where we started, this is the 3D drawing, so if I will make a copy, so I just make a square, so each segment has 5 meters, 5 meters, 5 meters, so I think the total of this one is, yeah, 40 meters, so 40 meters this way, 40 meters this way, so yeah, so that's the end of our that's the outcome of our 3D drawing. So, so we will proceed to that 3D drawing.